Hi, I'm going to help you. In this video, I'm going to help you get better by talking about five things that I have seen successful students do over the years. We're going to talk about five habits. Now, before I talk about these things, I want to emphasize two things. One, I myself did not do all of these things. I would be lying if I said I did. And the reason is, I mean, I was a good student, <laughs> but I'm not perfect, right? These things are awesome. Second thing I want to mention is that if you watch this video, I don't want you to feel bad because you're not doing all of these things. It's very rare to find a person that actually does all of these things. In fact, I, I, I'm trying to think of a particular student that I know that does all of these things, and I'm not sure if I can think of, yeah, maybe one, maybe one. I think I knew one person who probably did all of these things, but I'm not even sure if they did them all. So the point is, don't feel bad if you're not doing all of these things. It's a lot to ask. Okay, so here we go. Let's talk about five things, five habits of highly successful students. The first habit of highly successful students is that they actually do all of the homework and they finish it early. <laughs> that's that's the tricky part, right? So most people who you know are taking a class in high school or in college, they try to do the homework and many times they finish it. It's very common for students to do all of the homework and sometimes they just do some of it. But the trick is to actually finish it early. If you're wondering why finishing it early is important, it's because it allows you to do two things. So one, it allows you to go back and revisit anything that was fuzzy in your thinking. As a concrete example, in Calculus 2, people often struggle with the disk and shell method. So by finishing the homework a couple days early, you can go back and you can redo problems regarding the disk and shell method so that you can reinforce those ideas before the test. The second thing that finishing the homework early allows you to do is that it allows you to have some time to study for the test. It's really, really important to study for the test. So by finishing the homework early, you have some extra time so you can actually study for the test. That is super, super important. And another thing, which I wasn't going to mention, but I will, is a little bit weird. By finishing the homework early, it gives you a chance to rest. <laughs> That's right, you can take a break. I remember one time uh, in grad school, I finished the homework early. I studied for the test, and then the day before the test, I didn't do any math. I just kind of messed around on eBay, looking at like Magic the Gathering cards. I was really into that back then. And uh, maybe I played some video games or something. I didn't do any math. The day of the test, I got up really early, like I always do on test day, went over every single homework problem, studied, but I didn't burn out, I didn't do all the homework problems, just kind of glanced over them, took the test and did awesome. What an incredible experience, because I gave my mind a chance to rest. So finishing the homework early allows you to do all of those things, right? You can go back, revisit old topics, you can have some time to actually study for the test, and you can take a break before the test, right? You know, a test-taking experience, is, it can be tough depending on the class and the test and the teacher. So <laughs> sometimes you need a little bit of a break before the test. The second thing I've noticed that really highly successful students tend to do is that they go to every class. And again, this is one that I didn't do. I'd be lying if I said I did. I would not often, but sometimes skip class. And my reasoning was this, hey, I'm going to skip my Calc 2 class today so I can work on physics because I'm really having a hard time finishing the homework. <laughs> Terrible idea. And I did it multiple times and I didn't really learn from my mistakes. It took a long time for me to stop doing that. And other people do it too. I've had people tell me that they're not gonna come to my class because they need to do homework for another class. I just say, okay, <laughs> I say, are you sure? And you know, they just, you know, they don't go to class and then they, they study for another class. But it really is not worth it. At least in my experience, 
it was never worth it for me to skip class. I think I stopped doing it when I got to the harder classes. Once you get to like the proof-based classes and things get a little bit harder, you really don't ever want to skip class. And that's really when I stopped doing it. I should emphasize that even if you don't understand what's going on in class, it's still better not to skip class. I maybe understood on average 60% of what was taught in a classroom and hey, 60%, it's better than 0%, so it's still worth going. The third habit of really highly successful students is one that I actually did do and I did it every single time. This is one that I was actually really good about and some people are and some people don't do it. It's studying for tests. So highly successful students actually study for the tests. Sometimes you can get by without studying, but once you get to the harder classes, you're going to have to spend, you know, a lot of time studying. And so study for the test. That's like <laughs> the most important one. And I honestly think that that's the reason that I did so well. So, I mean, that's the, the one habit <laughs> that I really had down, right? I was a monster at studying for the test. The reason the test matters so much is because normally it's a really big percentage of your grade. So if you focus on that larger percentage, um, it will help you. So the test is a big deal. The fourth habit of highly successful students is that they actually ask questions in class. And again, this is one that I didn't really do, but the few times that I did do it, I do really remember the questions that I asked and the response that I got. So it was a huge learning experience. Also, whenever you ask questions, it really helps everyone else. You know, I was that person who sat in the back and would just never ask questions. And, you know, a lot of times people are scared to ask questions because they're scared of what other people will think. And here's an example of why. As a student, uh, I remember being in a class and there was always this guy who would raise his hand and ask questions. And I remember people, you know, making comments about him like, oh, he's so annoying. Why does he ask questions all the time? And I didn't say anything, but I thought it was great because every time he asked a question, sometimes I had that same question or sometimes I thought it was a really good question and the response that he got was always pretty good. So I really think it was a learning experience. As a teacher, uh, I had a student once who would always ask questions every single time. And one time, some of the classmates told me that they found it a, a little bit annoying. And I thought, no, I told no, <laughs> I think it's great. I think it's great he asked questions. And then someone interrupted and said, I think it's great too. And so like, you know, sometimes it's worth asking, right? I, I really think it is. Um, so don't be afraid to ask questions. You might annoy a few people, but I think you're going to help the majority. It's always good to ask questions. It helps you and it helps everyone else. The last thing that really highly successful students tend to do is they form study groups. And this is something that I really didn't do often. I did it a few times, but I didn't do it often. And if you're wondering, you know, if I'm already doing well, why on earth would I have to go to a study group? Well, you don't know, right? You don't know who you'll meet there. You don't know what questions you'll have answered. And even if you know everything already, you'll just end up teaching everyone else. And that's also a learning experience. People learn by teaching. You know, one of the reasons teachers know so much math is because they actually do it every day. And so they're practicing it every day and they're explaining it. You actually learn a lot by explaining math. And so by Going to study groups, even if you're already doing well, you'll get a lot out of it. And if you're not doing well, <laughs> then you should definitely go to a study group. It's a no brainer. So those are some habits of highly successful students. And again, looking back, I think the one I really nailed in my college experience was I was always really good about studying for the test. But the other four are also really important. And I think if I had done all five, I probably would have had a 4.0, which I didn't. I think I had like a 3.8 something. I have it written down somewhere to like four decimal places. It's pretty ridiculous. But <laughs> in any case, I hope this video has been helpful to you. And if you have you know, any other habits that you can recommend for any of the viewers, please leave a comment below. People read the comments and you know it helps people. Good luck to you.